guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna start off by planting a bunch of tomatoes out here on the new property. You can see some stakes right behind me. We're gonna be trying out a new staking system to me. It's the Florida weave or basket weave method of staking. Uh, and I'm excited to try it. I actually swore that I would never plant so many tomato plants as I did last year. We had 30 and today I'm planting 37. But I think if the staking is easier and I can just kind of hands off approach it a little bit more, I won't mind. <laughs> maybe. So all you need for the Florida weave is uh, stakes, good sturdy stakes, and some string. I mean, you can use jute twine. I've got some nylon rope. This was left over from our, our dahlia staking. Um, and I'll explain once I get some of these taller tomatoes planted, kind of how the actual staking works. You can see some ropes already attached to them. Um, and that we will utilize when the plants get a little bit bigger, but I'll show you down lower um, kind of how you do it. But these are the tomato plants right here. We've got this tray that I started late April and they're looking pretty good. Those are zinnias right there. We'll plant those out later. And then we've got a few garden treasure tomatoes and a few garden gem tomatoes. I've already planted two of this variety and two of this up in our raised beds closer to the house, which I intend to probably spend a little bit more time on. The ones I'm putting out here, I, I don't intend on doing a ton of pruning. I just kind of want to plant them. I'll kind of keep up on the staking, you know, with the ropes and we'll just see what, what happens. The thing is, there are a couple different types of tomatoes. You've got your determinate tomatoes and you usually find this information on the tag, but the determinates are ones that grow, they say smaller. They grow to a certain size and then they kind of cap out and they stop growing. Those are perfect for small space gardening um, or gardening where you don't want something to get out of control. Indeterminate tomatoes get huge. They just keep growing and growing and growing. So you have to have a very sturdy staking system, a very sturdy cage. We used the tightened tomato cages last year from Gardener Supply and they did a pretty good job because they were out here in the middle of nowhere. And you guys know how much wind we get. I mean, we had one storm where we were getting 70 mile an hour gusts and they kind of bent a little bit, but they held up these massively heavy tomato plants. It wasn't until the very end of the season. I think out of 30, I had two that kind of fell over. The cages didn't break. They just kind of like succumbed to the weight of the plant. But I thought that was a pretty good ratio. However, it's still uh, more work to do that. And I just want to try this out because it's such an inexpensive, simple way. Okay, so here's the deal. I've got my auger right here. I've got compost. I've got biotone hiding right over here. I'm going to get all the holes prepared. So I think with 37 tomatoes, we're gonna need, I think 18, was it 18 in one, on one row and 19 on the other? If that seems like way too many, I won't put that many out here, but I'm gonna try to squeeze them in. And then we did start running the drip system, so we had it only this far this morning. We had the staking system out this far and decided to add two more T-posts, so we'll need to come in and add more drip system, but they will be on their own zone. Right now, they're connected to the trees, but I think we'll go ahead and create their own zone, which will originate over here so we can water them separately from all the trees. Okay, so let me get all of these planted and then I will demonstrate the weed. So we got them all planted, all but five. I ended up deciding to go with the recommended every two foot spacing, which means two per opening. I didn't want to push it, especially since I've never tried this staking system before. Um, so anyway, it, this soil is incredibly hard out here though. Even with the auger, it was really hard to get holes dug. I think once we consistently water, it will soften up the soil a bit and the tomatoes should do fine. They did fine out here last year and we weren't that far away from this spot. So let me explain this uh, staking system. I brought a piece of string out, even though I'm actually not going to be using it today. Um, I'll probably wait until they get bigger to be in this thicker rope right here. Uh, and it won't be long until they're that big. So what you do is you tie off your rope or string to your stake and then you run it on one side of your tomato plant. So like for this one, I'm gonna run it on the back side. 
right here. And then you take the string and run it on the front side of the next tomato plant, like that. Then you wrap it around, hard to do with one hand. Hold on. Okay, we've got it wrapped around here and then you go on the opposite side. So since the string is on the front here, we'll run it on the back side. And then since it's on the back side here, we'll run it on the front side and then back around this stake and we'll tie it off. So you can see what we've done here is we've just crisscrossed to create a little bit of extra stability and there's an opening for each tomato plant. So an opening here and an opening here. Of course, you wanna tie it pretty tight and use a probably a bigger rope than what I demonstrated with here because tomatoes do get awful heavy um, and you wanna tie it pretty darn tight. And Paul actually came out here and did this and tied it really tight for me today. So anyway, we'll be able to utilize this right up here once we get a little bit more height on these tomato plants. And then you can continue up and tie off more pieces of rope wherever you want really, all the way up to the top of your stake. So you could use taller stakes. These aren't super tall. So I may end up having to top these once they get a little bit taller, um, just because, I mean, they'll keep wanting to grow. Uh, so I will probably just leave this string right here that I put in today. And then once the tomato plant gets taller, I'll just train it in between here, making sure to kind of crisscross these as I do it. So now I'm gonna grab my emitters here. And even though I don't have the drip system completely set up, I'm gonna go ahead and pop emitters in for all the tomatoes I do have planted. And I'm just going to use a one gallon per hour emitter and we'll do the same thing on every single one. So this will just come down in here and just pop right into the uh, water supply line and it will water right at the root zone of the tomato. So I'm almost done. I ran a one gallon per hour emitter to each of the plants that the drip tubing is nearby, but I'll have to run through and add extra drip tubing to the ones that didn't have any, like the ones by these extra posts we ran on the end. And then we will get it hooked up on its own drip system, like its own zone, so we can water it separately from everything else, which I think is the best thing to do for them. I did run through with a hose though and watered them all in just to make sure they were all settled into their homes nice and cozy. So I want to go through each one of these varieties and give you a few little details real quick. So you can see right here we've got the bigger tomatoes. These are the proven winners varieties. We've got Garden Treasure here. There are nine and then Garden Gem. There are six and then three on the far end of this row. So the Garden Treasures and I think I see blooms on all of them but or blooms starting to form but no fruit yet. And these are a slicer type, kind of a medium sized slicer, medium to large. I got some real big ones last year. Um, and they have a really good taste, like an heirloom taste uh, with more of like a slicer, like a regular slicer type structure. The garden gems over here, they already have a few fruit on them, which is exciting. You can see those right under there. Look at those. These were actually my favorite flavored tomato last year. They are so good. They're a snack sized tomato. Some got quite large though, like almost Roma size, really meaty, really good heirloom flavor. And these are a semi-determinate, or you might see the terms dwarf indeterminate. And both of those terms mean that they are kind of like the best of both worlds. They take a few characteristics from the determinant category and a few from the indeterminate category. Typically what that means is that they will be a smaller statured plant, but they will fruit like an indeterminate tomato because indeterminates fruit throughout the season. Determinate tomatoes usually put on a really heavy crop, but it's all within one kind of time frame, and then they stop producing. So it's kind of the best. Um, Husky cherry, which is on the end of this other row, was another one that is a semi-determinate. So when I was doing a little bit of reading about this variety when I got these seeds, it said that it's one of the prettiest tomato varieties out there. And I can see that. That's a pretty little plant. <laughs> I guess we'll have to see though as it grows, how it forms, what it turns into. But this one will also stay smaller and produce fruit throughout the whole season. And I guess it's a very prolific plant and it produces a ton of fruit, super tasty fruit um, that really look perfect. They look perfect in the picture anyway. I'm excited. Next up is Black Crim, which this is a really pretty heirloom. They're usually about eight ounce size fruit with a really deep rich flavor and um, they have really dark shoulders they're just a really pretty color so dark maroon body with kind of like mar dark maroon brown 
shoulders. So like where the tomato starts to curve and then up into the stem area, it's a different color. And then we've got beef steak and you guys like these steaks right here. I can't, I can't even uh, get them into the ground. The ground is so hard out here. So I have to put the steaks right in the planting hole. So hopefully they do okay. But beef steaks, they need to get with it because these are a long season fruit. They get big, like some of the fruit can get up to two pounds. And because of their size, they just tend to ripen later, which is kind of nice. If you have a long season, it's nice to have um, heirlooms because then you know you'll have some really amazing produce really late in the season. And then we've got big boys, which these are a big sandwich type slicer. One plant can produce up to a hundred pounds. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I imagine that you'd have to plant them a little bit earlier than in the season than I am to get that sort of yield, but that's pretty amazing. Um, but they bear a ton of fruit mid-season, like a really heavy mid-season crop, and then they start to bear fruit, but lighter up until frost. And then we've got Black Prince, which this one can also produce a lot of fruit, 25 to 45 uh, pounds. It's an heirloom, but it's a smaller sized fruit and it, it uh, ripens way earlier. So it's a good heirloom variety for colder climates. It actually originated in Siberia, which is interesting because you wouldn't think that tomatoes could survive in that sort of climate, but this one, that's where it comes from. And then Campari, which I've actually never grown these before, but this is the variety I buy at the grocery store the most because I usually am never disappointed in their flavor. Like if I have to buy tomatoes in the winter time, I will buy Campari tomato tomatoes. They're bigger than a cherry, cherry tomato, but they're not much bigger. They're smaller than Aroma. Um, high sugar, low acid, really good flavor. And I never, well, not never, but hardly ever find a mealy one. And I cannot abide mealy tomatoes. And then last up, these two little cute, these ones are cute, I think. I think these are a pretty plant. They're current red. So I grew these last year and they were huge, which kind of makes me feel like this patch is gonna be like, <laughs> I don't know. We're just gonna have to see how this whole staking system goes. But based on the size that these got, this might be like a tomato forest eventually. But the fruit on these, um, up to about a half inch in size, but they come out on really long clusters with fruit half inch and down. So they're really sweet and um, good flavor, and they're really fun to use in flower arranging. And that's typically why I want to grow these. So anyway, that is actually gonna be it for today's video. I fully intended on doing a few other things like planting that flat azinias that I have in my trailer and planting a couple pots up by the house. But then I read the storm warning on our my weather app on my phone and I thought, oh, I don't think so. It's supposed to get super windy and then at 11 p.m. tonight, we're supposed to get thunder and lightning storms and it's supposed to rain and be really windy all the way through noon tomorrow. So I think I'll wait on the other things. And this is good, I just thought, just getting the tomatoes in the ground would be a good project kind of to check off the list for the day so anyway i hope that this video was interesting just seeing this new new to me staking method i'm sure a lot of you guys have already tried it out and if you have i would love to hear your experience so let me know in the comment section if you have any pointers or suggestions or just in general your experience so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one bye